go over the questions from the review part two. The first one was a function review. It was reminding you what domain and range were. Well, domain is all of the x values. So remember we use the fancy brackets and then we write it in numeric order and we don't repeat anything, which you'll see in the next one. So the domain is one, two, three, and the range is all of the y values. So four, six, eight, and we still use those fancy parentheses. Functions don't have any x's that repeat. So since one is different than two, which is different than three, this is a function. The x's don't repeat. Same kind of question for the next one. The domain is all of the x values. We use the fancy parentheses and then we don't repeat the number. So even though it's one, 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 we just write the number one. The range is all of the y values. So two, six, and 10. Is it a function? No, because one went to two, six, and 10. So the one, the one's repeated and that's an x value. It doesn't matter if the y values repeat, but it does matter if the x values repeat. The next one is a vertical line review. That is where we draw a vertical line. If it only passes once, it is a function. If it passes more than once, it's not a function. So then we check this one. It only passes that vertical line one time. So that's a yes. Same thing for the next one. If it only passes once, it is a function. If it passes more than once, it's not a function. And then this one also only passes once. This is a proportions review. So proportions are functions that increase or decrease at a constant rate, and they start from the origin. So is the table a proportion? If so, write a proportional equation. That's where we do our y over our x, so our 4 over our 2, our 10 over our 5, and our 18 over our 9. So we'd have, we should have gotten that all of these are 2, and our proportional equation is y equals 2x. Same thing, 1 over 3, 2 over 6, 3 over 9. That all gives us 1 third. So we write the proportional equation y equals 1 third x. Remember, proportional equations look like y equals mx. Whatever you find is the constant is what you replace with m. So the last one. 8 over 2, 16 over 4, and 40 over 10. I always know what number to put on top because it's in the y column. All of those simplify down to 4, so our equation is y equals 4x. This is where we make the table, state the unit rate, and then graph the points. We make the table by doing four times whatever x is. So y equals four times zero would give us zero. Y equals four times one would give us four. Y equals four times two, which would give us six. Y equals four times three, which will give us 12. And then y equals four times four, which is 16. The unit rate is the constant of proportionality, so four. Now we can plot the points, one comma four. You can also check by doing your rise over your run. Even if you plotted the points like normally, you would get the same thing. So one comma four would be rising four and over one, rising four over one, rising four over one. And that's how we graph that. We do the same thing for three X. You should have gotten zero, three, six, nine, and 12 the unit rate of three, and then it's one comma three. So up three over one, up three over one, up three over one. 
There you go. The point three comma 12 is on a proportional graph. What equation represents the situation? Well, that is where we have to find the constant of proportionality, which is our y over our x. So our 12 over our three, which is equal to four. To make the equation, we do y equals mx and replace it with our constant. That's how you make a proportional equation from a point. Next one, y over x. So it's our y over our x, our one over our five. That is a simplified fraction. So my equation is y equals one fifth x. Little slope review here for you. We find the slope by doing our rise over our run, so one, two, three, four, and then running two. Our rise was four over our run, which was two. Four over two simplifies to two. Looking at the next one, this is gonna be a negative slope because it's going downhill. So my final answer should be negative. And it is, our rise was negative three and our run was positive two. See how much we rise on this one. I know it's gonna be positive because it's going uphill from left to right. We rise three and we run four. So three over four. This one, we had to put two points on the graph and then we can check. Bike is going downhill, so it's negative. To give us negative two over four, which is simplified to negative one half. All right, finally, we've got some slope formula review. So we're using the formula y2 minus y1. So first we have to label all of our points. And then we plug them in. So our y2 was two, our y1 was three, our x2 was four, and our x1 is one. Two minus three is negative one, four minus one is three. We move to the next one. It's always x1, y1, oops. And then x2, y2. So our y2 is three, our y1 is four, our x2 is eight, and our x1 is negative one. So we write that as a minus a negative. Three minus four is negative one. Eight minus one is positive nine. So we've got negative one ninths. Same thing, x1, y1 x2, y2. y2 is 3, y1 is also 3, x2 is 5, and x1 is 2. 3 minus 3 is 0, and 5 minus 2 is 3. 0 on top is okay, which means it's going to give us 0 as an answer. It's going to give us a real number. Next one, we've got x1, y1, x2, y2. 3 minus 4, and then 2 minus 2. Negative 1 over 0, well, that's a 0 on the bottom, sorry, which is a no. And we call it that because it gives us an undefined slope. If you put that in your calculator, you would get error. So that one is undefined. Okay, that is that.